Shalom, Shalom, family. Brother Ananias. Another AOI edition of Truth Be Told. What we're going to be talking about today is basically going over uh, giving you the remedy to sickness. For all those who want to know about why we get sick, how to defeat it, how to be cured, all these different things. You got to realize that everything starts start from the Lord. You got to understand those things. So, to prove that, just like the Bible say in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, prove all things. So what we're going to do is dive deep into the scripture. So to start off, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 2 and 6. First Samuel 2 and 6. And it reads, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust. Lifteth the, be the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. So what is that saying? That's letting you know straight off the top. That everything comes from the Lord. The Lord telling you this. Daniel is speaking on the behalf of the Lord, but the Lord is speaking through him. And he letting you know what? That he does all things. So to furthermore prove that, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 15 and 26. In the beginning, Exodus chapter 15 and 26. And it reads, and say, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. So what is that saying? When you do what is right, which is keep the commandments of the Most High God, you will not be plagued with any type of disease. I know that's hard for some of y'all to understand or to grasp that concept, but yes, it's true. It's in the Bible. The Lord gave us the direct answer to everything. Any question about life that we have, he gave us the answer to. All we got to do is open the book and read and believe. You know, because this book, whether many want to believe it or not, is only written to one nation of people. God's chosen, the Israelites. It's been like that since day one. But due to our disobedience as Israelites, we've been put at a lower state due to our disobedience, and now we follow the ways of the enemy or the heathen. It's that simple. And they're going to teach us lies to keep us on the bottom. And we believe in them rather than believe in the Most High God. So, we, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, what's the, what I'm trying to say is we basically run after their uh, ideas or their theories or their uh, philosophies or their way of living rather than uh, seek what the Most High God of Israel requires or what he says. You know, we chase behind the enemy. And because of that ignorance, we uh, find ourselves plagued with all type of different diseases sicknesses. It's really quite simple, but for the untrained mind or the untrained eye, you'll never see that, you know? So from there, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28 and 60. Deuteronomy 28 and 60. Let's see what the Lord said. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all these diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of the law, them will he will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Did you hear that? That's one of the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that he was going to put upon his people. For being disobedient. Every plague, every disease that's not written in this book, he 
he's going to bring against his people for being disobedient, for breaking God's commandments, for sinning, because that's what sin is, the transgression of God's law. So for us breaking his law, one of the punishments or one of the curses would be he was going to apply every sickness that's not written in the book of the law. So, so what we want to do right now is think about the current situation that we're living in. Uh, what's what's the plague in the world right now? Uh, COVID-19, Covina, or uh, COVID, you know? It's not written in the book of the law, but it's killing our people. They're knocking them all left and right. Why? Disobedience breaking God's laws. Simple laws, like what? Uh, not eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Simple commandment. That's in uh, Leviticus chapter 11. But for us not following that simple commandment, God is plaguing us. Now, even before COVID-19 even hit the scene, you can look at uh, every statistical category you can think of regarding our people. When it comes to disease, we at the top. You know? Think about these gout, high blood pressure, heart attack. Uh, I could go on cancer, uh, HIV, you know, all these different STDs. Why? Because we constantly breaking God's law. We don't understand what's going on. And the enemy is damn sure not going to tell you what's going on. That's why they're allowing you to continue to fall further and further in society. That's why our people, even though we the best at everything, we at the bottom of society, struggling day in and day out, week, week to week, check to check. Last high, first fire. All these different things run hand in hand. Well, all these things stem from our one simple, uh, one simple answer for us breaking God's commandments, being disobedient. You know, but today's topic we talking about sickness. How does sickness plague our people? Simple. Breaking God's commandments, you know. He already told us in two different accounts that we read so far. In Exodus, now in Deuteronomy, that for breaking his commandments, one of the punishments or one of the curses to his people would be sickness. That he would bring upon us for breaking his law. So from now, let's go to Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. Let's see what the Lord is talking about now. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10, and it reads, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed, to, bowed together and could in no wise lift, her, lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called, uh, called to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. See that? By having faith in the Most High. He healed her. Through his son, he healed her. This woman has been bent over crooked for 18 years. Over 18 years. There wasn't no, nothing that anybody could do to help her. But when she believed and came to Christ, the son of the Son of Man, the Son of God, he healed her because she believed him. Just like I'm telling you how you gotta believe on the word of the most high God. He states that over and over again throughout the whole Bible. Basically telling you you can't survive on bread or food alone, but out off of uh, every word that flows out of the mouth of God. You can get that in Deuteronomy and you can get that in Matthew. Moses said it, Christ said it, you know? So we got to understand, you got to have faith, you got to believe in the Lord, you know? And another thing I want to bring out about this is, uh, is Luke chapter 13, verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, Saturday. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. 
And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men are to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then asked, answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doeth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from, from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound to these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? So what do what, what we just learn right there? What do we just read? Christ healed this woman because she had faith in him. Also, he stated that Satan had bound her for 18 years. So that this situation could be manifest so it could glorify the Most High God. But he also put a key fact in there that Satan had bound her. Why? How? Sin. Sin is the key. That's what I was saying earlier when the Most High said he put these plagues and sicknesses and diseases on our people. He don't have to physically get off the throne to do anything. He got somebody to do everything for him. Satan is one of those people or one of those spirits that he has to go and do these different things for him. You need to understand that. So when you sin him, you give right, or you give God the ability for Satan to come and put that sickness on you. Most High has said it several times, but what I wanted to pull out of that was that when she believed and came to Christ, uh, loosed her from those bands that Satan had put on her, where she was basically uh, crippled for 18 years. Think about that. That's powerful. But now let's go to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And it reads, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You see that the Most High is basically telling us in a nutshell, when my people who are called by my name, the Israelites, when they uh, repent, humble themselves, pray and seek him, Seek his face and turn away from their wicked ways. That's what it means to repent, meaning to turn from your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, meaning until you do that, he ain't hearing your prayer. Until you repent and turn from your wicked ways, he is not listening to your prayer. Yes, your pastor should have told you this, but they just want your money and give you a feel-good speech. But the Bible is telling you exactly what it is that you need to do in order to uh, get rid of that sickness, get rid of that disease, to prevent it from happening to you and your family. You got to repent. You got to seek the Lord day in and day out. Humble yourself, you know? What I mean by that, you know you're an Israelite because you fit these curses. You gotta accept it and come back to God. Turn from your wicked ways of following the heathen, trying to do what the enemy does, trying to chase their lifestyle. Come back and open this book and read and find out who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. That's being humble. Repent, turning away from your ways. Seek the Lord, pray. Find out how you're supposed to pray. We did a video on that. The church ain't gonna teach you, and it's not going to teach you how to pray the correct way. The Most High God got the format for you, and it's in the scriptures. But you got to seek him, be humble, repent of your ways, seek him. And then he said he's going to heal you and the land. But we so simple, we so uh, destroyed for our uh, lack of knowledge that we following the enemies, the same folks that, folks that are hanging from trees, uh, beat you down when you're in their store shopping, accusing you to steal, of stealing. The same folks that are sabotage your water supply, you know, 
tell you uh, the worst foods, how you living in the worst conditions in the worst neighborhood, put drugs in your neighborhood. These are the same people that we trust in and try to chase a lifestyle out. Try to impress these folks. When the Lord call them dogs, when the Lord say they're your enemy, why do you trust in your enemy instead of trusting in the one who created you? You got to think about these things. Life is not complex. We make it complex with the silly decisions that we make. You got to think about these things. But from now, let's go to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5. All right. It's the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. So you're going to have your own problems. You're going to go through ups and downs. But that shouldn't get you to the point where you sin. If anything, you need to refrain from all evil. You need to be striving to learn who you are and what you're supposed to do. So you don't sin in front of the most high. Sin, period. You know, you can't hide from him. So you need to be reading the words that he gave you, the instruction manual that he gave you as an Israelite on how to live your life correctly so that you don't end up sick, so that you don't plague your family, so you don't plague yourself. You know, read his word. Understand. Watch these videos. Do your own diligence. Research. You know, it's not hard. You'll search out any and every other thing except what's right and what you need in your life. I wouldn't be wasting my time sitting here talking to you if it wasn't important. You need to consider that as well. You know? From now, let's go to uh, Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15 and 4. And it reads, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I know you heard us use this and heard that verse many a time before. But whatsoever was written beforehand was written for your learning. Everything that's written in the scripture is written for your learning. Give you your background, your history, because apparently us as a people, as Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We don't know who the hell we are. So we're supposed to open this book and read it. That's why they wrote it down. So we can come back and read it and realize who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. We got to understand these things. So from there, let's go to James chapter 5 and verse 14. James chapter 5 and verse 14. Bear with me. Bear with me. James chapter 5 and verse 14 and it reads Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You see that? But I'm going to keep reading. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. You see that? So the elders who know not to break God's commandment, their prayer is powerful. You know, they've been walking in this truth for a long time, being righteous. So when you ask for the prayer of the elderly to pray for you, it's powerful. You know? And if you repent, the Lord going to forgive you of your sin and heal you. You know? So now let's go to uh, Mark 9 and 28. Mark 9 and 28. And it reads, And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. You know, because there's some sicknesses, there's some illnesses, there's some vices, some diseases that our people go through, whether you want to know it or not. All of these things are spiritual. Everything in life that we do is spiritual. So Christ was letting his disciples know at that time that what? Sometimes it can't just be a prayer. Sometimes that person has to actually fast 
meaning not eat, not drink, afflict their soul, and pray to remove a spirit or a demon. You know, because that's where the sickness is, if you ain't caught on by now. All these different things are spirits, demons. Spirits sent by the Most High God. You know, when you sin, he's going to put some spirits on you. Whether it had you sick in the mind where you delusional or lunatic, or you sick where you crippled and humped over, or where you got uh, inflammation, fevers, you know, shortness of breath, pneumonias, your COVID, you know, those are spirits sent on you by the Most High God because he's controlling it all. Y'all already told you that several times before. That. But we're going to go to uh, Genesis 1 and 29. We're going to go to the beginning and find out something. Because one of the things that I like to talk about, or when I'm trying to solve a problem or even hear any type of situation, I don't like to just deal with the fruit. Me personally, I like to start at the root. Because when you start at the root, you get to the bottom of it. What caused it? How did it start? Why did it start? That's what happens when you look at the root. When you just look at the fruit, you sit there and you blame it. Ah, oh, that happened because of this. Or oh, I seen that, that's why it happened. Ah, oh, you need to get to the root of it. Root of the problem. So we're going to go to the beginning in Genesis, and we're going to find out some things that the Most High God put here for us to help us with sickness, diseases, you know? Contrary to what the world or what you see on TV, the media will tell you, this is what the scripture is going to tell you. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat meat, but herb, but medicine to help you. So why do we want to go uh, pop pills? When you know deep down, well, you ain't even got to go deep. You know, since you've been on this planet, that those medicines that we go by in the store have never cured anything. The enemy's way of uh, manipulating us is masking things. You know, they hide the truth and prolong it. That's all they do. For instance, headaches. Has anybody ever came out with something that uh, did away with uh, headaches? No. What do they do? They give you something that makes it go away for the time being. So that you'll keep taking it and you'll come back and buy more. It's not, it will never uh, give you something it's not uh, financially or monetarily uh, good for them. We all know this. If it ain't about money, they're not going to do it. If they can't make money off of it, they're not going to do it. That's the way of the world. But I'm talking to you as a, a Israelite brother, king, who cares about his people. So I'm speaking to you. I don't need no money for this. Money ain't going to get us in this situation, and it ain't going to get us out. Lies got us into this situation. Disobedience got us into this situation. What I bring to you and what I speak to you is straight out of the scripture, which is healing, righteousness, love, understanding, instruction. You know, I don't need no money. I'm completely opposite of what you see in the world. That's what we need to do. That's what the Lord commands us as Israelites to do. Be ye separate. Be ye holy different. We need to separate from the ways of the world, the ways of the heathen or the enemy. If we want that true healing. You understand? So for now, let's go to uh, Psalms 104 and 14. Psalms 104 and 14. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. That he bring forth food out of the earth. You see that? I'm going to read it again for you. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. Herb for the service of man. For healing. To eat. Not to get high with. 
Not to go make money off of, but for the service of man. To do righteous with. It's here to help you. To help build you up, not destroy you. You know? But we use it for wickedness. The enemy uses it for wickedness. They used to lock you up for selling these herbs. Even the ones that's not uh, the kind that you smoke. They lock you up for these things until they figured out a way to make money off of it. Now it's legalized. Remember this. From now, let's go to Ezekiel 47 and 12. Ezekiel 47 and 12. Notice how I'm jumping around the Bible. That's how you're supposed to be. Precept upon precept. That's how the Bible has been broken down. So we're going to go to Ezekiel 47 and 12. And it reads, And by the river, upon the bank thereof, on the side, on this side of the, and on that side, shall grow all trees for me, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issue out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So the leaf of the plant is supposed to be for medicine, and the fruit on it is supposed to be for meat. Think about it. So from now we're gonna to go to Proverbs chapter 17 and 30, 22. Proverbs 17 and 22. And it reads, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bone. So when you got a uh, a good spirit about yourself, you're happy, you're uh you're healthy. When you got a uh, a weary mind or heart, you're depressed, you uh got an anxiety, you're depressed, uh to the point where you're sick, you're down, your body is shutting down because that's all you're thinking about, you know? Like you're getting all these aches and pains where you feel you gotta take these different medicines antidepressants and all this and that. But in actuality, it's all about your uh, perception of things. As a man thinketh, so so is he. And so shall he be. You know? That's in the scriptures. They also have written books about this as well. Whatever you think is what you're going to be. You know? And that's the same thing. Uh, takes the same toll on the body as well. So the scripture just said, a merry heart is good like medicine. So take that into consideration as well. You got to be in good spirit. You got to have the right mindset every day you wake up. You know? Your mind should be, as an Israelite man or woman and child, you should be waking up glad that you were woke, woken up that morning, that the most high woke you up. And you should be rejoicing in the fact you get to serve the Lord another day. It's that simple. That gives you uh, ease of mind, a merry heart, a merry mind. You know? But for now, let's go to, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 41, verse 1. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. Shall be blessed upon the earth. Thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. I say, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. So, what is David saying right here? King David, he's the one that wrote Psalms. What is he saying right here? That the Lord will strengthen you. Lord sustains you. You know? The Lord do all these things. But he also said, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. So what is that making reference to? He's sick because he sinned. It's not hard. It's not a hard concept at all. Everybody in, in, uh, before our time knew that. They knew that by sinning, you would end up sick. Think about that. That's why uh, when Christ healed the blind man, what did the disciples ask? 
asked him, who sinned, this man or his parents? They knew sin brought those things upon people. You need to get back to that mindset of knowing what's going on, Israel. Well, from there, let's go to Exodus 23 and 25. Exodus chapter 23, verse 30, oh, verse 25. Exodus 23 and 25. And it reads, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and will take sickness away from, from the midst of thee. If you come to serve the Lord, how do you serve him? By keeping his commandments. That's what he's telling you. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall take away, shall, shall bless thy bread and thy water, and will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There you go again. Another reference to keeping God's commandments, and he'll take away sickness. If you break his law, that's when you end up sick, disease. Think about this. Not a hard concept, once again. That's just another reference to that. But for now, let's go to Deuteronomy. 7 and 15. 7 and 15. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. Read. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. You, you see that? You see the power in it? When your family being done wrong, when it's injustice, when you get your George Floyd's, your uh, Breonna Taylor's, Tamir Rice's, you need to look onto these scriptures and we need to start keeping God's commandments. Otherwise, these things will be happening. And if we kept God's commandments, he said, well, and we'll put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So your friends are those or the people that say uh, that you claim to be your friend. They wouldn't be uh, putting their uh, knee in your neck to your dad. They wouldn't be running into your apartment while you sleep and spraying your uh, house up. They wouldn't be shooting you unarmed if they were your friends, if they weren't your enemy. But the Most High God of Israel telling our people, if you come to serve him, Gonna, he will make sure that you don't get none of those sicknesses or diseases. But instead of putting them on you, he's going to put them on your enemy. What kind of, uh, that, that's a promise I want. You know? That's the glory of being an Israelite. You know? The other nations know that. That's why they don't want you to realize who you are. That's why they'll come up with so many uh, different misconceptions to have you fooled thinking that you something else, by African American. That's two different continents. Why is it only black people can be African American? When you have other nationalities that are born in Africa and come and live in America, but they're not known as African Americans. But they hit you with those titles. You embrace it. You think, yeah, that's what I am. Whatever the enemy calls you, which is a byword, you accept and you roll with it. And you try to make it cool. No, that's foolish. That's simple as hell. And the Lord asked you in uh, Proverbs, how long you simple ones will you love simplicity? You don't do no research. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're the smartest people on the planet. We're supposed to be doing research on the things that matter. Mainly knowing who you are. Consider that, Israel. But from now, let's go to Jeremiah 33 and 6. Jeremiah 33 and 6. Jeremiah 33 and 6. And it reads, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Who is the most high talking to? He's talking through his prophet Jeremiah to the Israelites. I will cause, who he said, I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them a 
is at the first, he gonna build us back up, heal us. But we got to come back and keep his commandments. Those are the conditions. You got to understand that. Now let's go back to Proverbs chapter 4 and 20. Proverbs chapter 4 and 20. And it reads, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. See that? The most high saying, take heed to his words. They are life and healing to your flesh. What he tell you and what, he, what is written in his book is healing. But the enemy and what the media and the rest of the world will tell you is that, ah, oh, we don't have to do anything in there. Close the book up and give you all type of uh, foolishness or rumors to make you stick or stray away from the Bible, from your scriptures, from your instruction. Like, uh, for an example, uh, this book was used to enslave us. So why should I be reading? Is it true? Is it in there that it was used to enslave us? What is actually written in there? What did they read that allowed them to be able to do that, if that is the case? You should be reading that. You shouldn't be running from it. You should be reading that. Because obviously, it got them in a the position of power. Think about that. They come up with other rumors to uh, divert you from reading it, like King James was a white man, or King James was a homosexual. If that was the case, then why is every prophet in the Bible depicted as a black man? And if he was a homosexual, think about this as well, why would he be uh, against that in the scripture? If he wrote it, which he didn't, he authorized the translation. But if he wrote it, wouldn't he take that out of it? Wouldn't he take out uh, the description of Christ if he was a white man? Wouldn't he take out homosexuality? Because in the Bible, Most High speaks against it, saying that it's a punishment worthy of death. You will be put to death for that. So these are some of the strategic... Uh, notions or practices that they use to deter the black man and black woman away from reading their heritage. That's what the Bible is, your heritage, your history book. And what I'm explaining to you today is the reason why the Israelite man, woman, and child get sick is because we sin. It's that simple. Not because of what's in the air. Uh, it's because we sin. We eat the wrong food. God gave us a dietary law. We do the wrong thing. We out uh, working on the Sabbath day, end up injured, hurt, losing your money, losing your sanity. You know, you follow them behind the doctrine of devils. You know, they got you taking prescribed medicines to help deal with your depression, your anxiety, which are doing nothing but hurting you. They're not, uh, helping you at all, but they'll have you to believe that, oh, we've done so many studies, and oh, Most High gave you herbs on the ground for medicine, and he gave you the remedy throughout the scripture. Basically, do what he tell you to do, and you straight. You don't want to adhere to that, though. You don't want authority. You don't want instruction as a nation. You want to follow. You know? Think about that. But from now, let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 16 and 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 12. Where you at? Where you at? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 12. And it reads, For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. Which does what? Healeth all things. The word, the scripture, heal all things. We reject this truth, though. We reject knowledge. We 
falling behind the enemy, thinking they're going to help you. When have they ever helped you? You think they helped you because they helped you get in a car? No. You got in that car and you were slave to debt to pay for that car. That's why they let you in that car. You thought you, uh, they was doing you a favor when they let you get that loan for that house. Nah, you in debt to that house. You slave to that house to paying that mortgage. Think about these things. Think they helping you by giving you a prescription? Nah, you're going to have to pay for that. You're going to have to keep getting refilled. You're going to have to come back to see me. Think about these things. And now let's go to Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. And read. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's another reference from the Most High telling you, he got you, but you got to be doing what he asks you to do. You got to be doing what he requires of you first. That's simple. Same way you want to get paid at a job, you got to do exactly what they want you to do. They want you to show up at this time and work from that time to that time, from Monday through Friday, in order for you to get a check. And while you're here, you got to do this and do that in order to get that check. It's simple. In order for the most high to do anything for you, you got to do what he asked for. Simple concept. Stop making it complex. You know, from there, let's go to uh, back in Sirach, chapter 30. Verse 14. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 14. And it reads, Better is the poor, being sound and strong of constitution, than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. So the Lord right here is saying, Better is a poor man that got his health than a rich man that whose body is afflicted. You know, ask yourself this one question. What good does it do to have all the money in the world and you can't even stand up and walk down the street. You can't even scratch your own back. Think about these things. The Lord said it is better for, better is, better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. That's simple. But I'm going to keep reading. It says, Verse 15, health and good estate of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. To basically break that down, the most high God is saying, if you ain't got your health, you ain't got nothing. You can have all the money you want, but your health is more precious than that gold and silver that you're striving to get every day. You know? If you don't have your health, what do you have? If you can't stand up and walk down the street, what do you have? can't bend down to hug your child or your mate, what good are you? You know? What, what's the purpose? I'm going to keep reading though. Verse 16. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. Same principle. Verse 17. Death is better than a bitter life of continual sickness. You see that? Death is better than going through a life full of anguish, sickness, disease. You know, the Lord said death is better than doing that. Verse 18, delicates poured upon a mouth shut up or as messes of meat set upon a grave. What good doeth the offering unto an idol? Neither can it eat nor smell. So is he that is persecuted of the Lord. So, the Lord is basically making good references to the importance of your health. You know, trying to get all this money, trying to chase the bag, trying to get a, the buck, trying to change, uh, what, what they say, uh, trying to change a dollar, uh, make a dollar out of 15 cents. Old saying, but you hear it all the time. What good is that if you don't have your health, though? Not taking care of yourself. Not eating the right food. Not exercising. You know? 
Think about these things. Most High ain't got a plan. Well, he wrote everything down. He gave us everything that we need. The chief things in life. Instruction, food, the health, the clothing, the roof over your head. He gave you everything you need. We want more, though. And we overlook the small things, the important, the chief things in life. Philly. But for now, let's go to uh, Sirach 37 and 29. This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, chapter 37 and verse 29. And it reads, this is a, uh, well, let me read it. Be not un unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, and suffering will turn into choler. By surveying have many perished, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. So what is this talking about? Healthy eating, not being greedy. You know, he said, uh, be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor greedy upon many meats. Slow down on your red meats. Your damn shows you ain't supposed to be eating the pork, the swine, the pig, the shrimp, the lobster. You're not supposed to be eating that. But on the other meats, he said, slow down on it. You don't need it every day. You don't need it all day. Slow down on it. He said, for an excess, meaning too much eating, too much of anything is bad for you. But right here he's saying, excess of meats brings sickness. Understand that. That many have perished from excess of eating, obesity, you know, improper diet, heartache, you know, heart attack, and high blood pressure. Fogging of the veins, you know, all kind of medical complications. All these different things stem from poor diet. So one of the things that the Most High describes and talks about in the scriptures is how to eat and what to eat. Simple. But we're going to go to Sirach 31 and 19. And it reads, a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetches not his wind short upon his bed. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. He riseth early, and his wits are with him. But the pain of watching and shoulder, the pains of the belly are with an unsatiable man. And if thou hast been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have test, have rest, my excuse me. My son, hear me, and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee, and all thy works be quick, so shall there no sickness come up unto thee. What the Lord is saying right there, a very little is sufficient for a man. But here in America, what do they do? They want you to supersize everything. They want you to get two for one, or uh, two for four, two for five. They want you to eat, eat, eat. You go to these other countries, they don't eat like that. That's why it's rare for you to see obese uh, people in, a, in these other countries. It's not just the fact that they're poor, but the fact that they don't live a lifestyle of just eating all the damn day. You know, but the Lord said, uh, very little is sufficient for a man well nourished, nurtured. And he fetches not his wind short upon his bed. Meaning you ain't going to be short of breath. You ain't going to be uh, burping and belching everywhere. You ain't going to uh, be farting all over the place. And he said when you eat just enough, he said sleep cometh of moderate eating. And when you're going to rise up, you rise early and you got your wits. But when you eat too much, you wake up and you sluggish. I don't want to get up. You're hitting the clock. You're hitting the snooze. You know, you drag an ass. The most I got the remedy for everything. You know, but what did he say at the very end? My son, hear me and despise me not. And talking about these commandments. And at the last thou shalt find as I told thee. 
and all thy works be quick, so shall there no sickness come unto thee. But when you do what he tell you to do, you ain't gonna get sick. Not hard. Not a hard concept at all. Well, for now, let's go to uh, Sirach 38. We're going to read 1 through 15. It's going to be talking about doctrine. Yeah, the most high, he talk about everything in the scripture. The old learning. That's why I'm bringing it out today. The love for understanding, for edification to my people, the Israelites. That's what I'm supposed to do. What good it do me to learn all this and keep it to myself? I got to help. Wake my people up. That's what I'm doing. So we in the book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha. Chapter 38, verse 1. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which ye may have of him. For the Lord have created him. You hear that? The Lord have created him. The physician is the doctor. For the most high cometh healing of the most high God of Israel cometh healing and he shall receive honor of the king the skill of the physician shall lift up his head and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration the Lord have created medicines out of the earth you see that created medicines out of the earth and he that is wise will not abhor them, meaning will not hate them. Verse 5. Was not the water made sweet with wood, that the virtue thereof might be known? And he have given men skill, that he might be honored in his marvelous works. With such doeth he heal men, and taketh away their pain. Of such do the apothecary, now, apothecary Make a confession, and of his works there is no end, and from him is peace all of me read that again. And from him is peace all of the earth, over all the earth. Excuse me. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. Leave off from sin. And order thy hands aright and cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. So you go again, the most high telling you, stop sinning in order to be healed. Stop sinning and you won't get sick. Verse 11, give a sweet savor and a memorial of fine flour and make a fat concerning as not being. Then give place to the physician, for the Lord have created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. So this is for the brothers and sisters that uh, don't want to go to the doctor. There is a time when you will need that doctor. Don't neglect that doctor. You know? Remember this. Verse 13. There is a time when in their hands there is good success. Surgeries. You know, trying to uh, revive you. Shortness of breath, uh, aneurysm, all these different things. There's a time when in their hands, talking about the doctor, the physician, there is good success. Now, what you need to understand from that also is, it says, there is, there is a time in, in their hands, there is good success. So, it's going to be a time where there's bad success or back there up. You know one thing about life and about the Bible is twofold everything. Verse 14. For they shall also pray unto the Lord that he would prosper that, which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. You know? So before you even uh deal with the doctors that you choose to, you need to do your own research and inquire of them and ask and see what type of person they are. Do they pray to the Most High? Do they keep the commandments? Are they sinning? You know, even though the Lord created them, you got to be aware of what's going on. You need to inquire of these people, especially the ones that's supposed to be doing surgery on you. You know, don't just go by their reputation or their record. Ask them, find out, do your due diligence, prove a friend, prove all things. 
you know? Verse 15. This should be kicking. He that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. Woo! That's a deep one right there. So if you done been to the doctor and because of your sickness, having surgeries and all these different things, think about your ways. I'm going to read that one more time. This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes in the Apocalypse, chapter 38, verse 15. He that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. What is that basically saying? Sin, the sinful get sick. Like we've been saying this whole lesson. So if you still got questions on how or why do we end up sick, check your ways. Check yourself. Open the scriptures up. Find out what you're supposed to be doing and what you're not supposed to be doing. Make it easy on yourself. Read it. Make it make sense to you. Stop just taking what the enemy tells you and what you read or what you see on TV and think it is gold. Everything that shines or glitters ain't gold. Understand that. So now let's go to Proverbs 18 and 13. Proverbs 18 and 13. And it reads, he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? What is that saying right there? Find answers and not be a broken spirit. Just like I was just telling you. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Do your research. Because Go in there and you go in under the knife, it's not going to be the same. Doctors still going to continue living their life. If you went under that knife, you'll never be the same. You go in there trusting in their care, and your body and your lifestyle is altered. They're going to continue on in their lifestyle, chilling, having a good time, enjoying life. Now you depressed. Lifestyles altered. You need to do your research. Don't just take my word for it. Read these scriptures. That's what they're here for. So now let's go to uh, Mark 9 and 17. Mark 9 and 17. And it reads this is an example of something that most of us go through. So I'm going to break it down. This is uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 17, and we're going to read to 29. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child, and oft time, it have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy mind, unbelief. Jesus saw that the people came running together, and he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, and so much that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up in a robe. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So, 
once again, just to make reference to some diseases, some spirits, some demons that are on our people can only come from or be relieved from fasting and prayer. You know? Prayer and fasting. No eating, no drinking. Picking your soul for the Lord. Crying out for the Most High God to help you. Turning away from your wicked ways and your sins to get these diseases and sicknesses off of you. You know, they hinder you day in and day out. Stop uh, listening to these doctors telling you get chemotherapy knowing that it don't work. When you do your research, you'll find out that they'll tell you that over 80% of the patients that use chemotherapy, it does not work. The only reason they suggest it is because those chemotherapy companies or pharmaceutical companies give them doctors bonuses where they can take vacation trips. You know, get paid extra money to prescribe that as a, uh, a medication when it all is actually doing in life is prolonging the death. Rather than give the real remedy, which is stop sinning, come back to the Lord, keep his commandments, they want to give you a lie. Chemotherapy. It does not work. Think about these things. Stop sinning. Turn to the Lord. Be humble. Remember who you are. You're an Israelite. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. You're an Israelite. God's chosen people. He gave you a, a rule book, an instruction manual to live life by. That's what the word Bible means. Basic instruction before leaving earth. You got instruction. Everything that is ever made on this earth has an instruction manual. That computer, that clock you bought, that car you bought. Everything, the VCR, the DVD player, the phone that everybody uh, cherishes and holds so dear to their heart. It had an instruction manual. You have no problem opening that up to read it, but why won't you open up the one that pertains to your life? You'd rather go by what you see on TV and think that to be true. You need to wake up, Israel. That's why I'm talking to you. The Lord got me here doing this. You know? This ain't of my own will. But now let's go to uh, Revelation 21 and 4. I got Revelation 21 and 4. Bear with me, bear with me. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. What is he talking about right here? This is when he comes to redeem his people, to save his people in a new kingdom. Ain't going to be no more death, no more pain, no more sickness. How do you get that? How do you get the kingdom? By keeping God's commandments. Those are the elect. Those are the ones that are going to get the kingdom. Very narrow is the path. You got to walk that straight line. Keeping the commandments. And don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on the ways of the world when they tell you no man can keep them commandments. If it wasn't possible, the Most High wouldn't tell you to do it. Think about that. Think about that. It's not hard. So, we're going to end it with Proverbs 7 and 2. That's my favorite skill, as you can see. Proverbs 7 and 2. Get the understanding. We're going to close it out. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2, and it reads Well, I started one. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with you. Verse 2. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. So, you want to <clears throat> stay sick free, you want to be uh, disease free. You don't want to be hindered in life. The best way to do so is to follow God's plan. Keep his commandments. Open his book. Find out what his commandments are. Ask questions. Do your due diligence. Whatever you got to do. Find out what's required of you, Israel. You're an Israelite. 
You're supposed to be serving God, keeping his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. So, and no, we learned something. Brother Ananias, it'd be another moment of truth be told. Man, I see you tomorrow.